Hi everyone. This video discusses the flop breakdown tool in Flopzilla Pro. To get to this tool, leave the board empty and click on this symbol. The flop breakdown tool will show you how many flops of different types exist. Here on top it will tell you that there's 22,100 possible ways of drawing a flop. In the lower left it will show a random sample of the flops that it's currently filtering for. So right now, this is just a list of randomly drawn flops. The flops are subdivided into four main types. These types are unpaired flops, paired flops where the top card is paired, paired flops where the bottom card is paired, and trip flops. To look at these flop types, let's begin by looking at trip flops. Of the 22,100 flops, there's 52 flops that are trip flops. If I turn everything off by removing these check marks and leave only trip selected, then a sample of what is selected will be shown in the lower left. To draw another random sample, click the redraw button. In the second section of the trip field, we can add additional filters for rainbow, two flush, or monotone. And for trip flops, only rainbow is possible. In the third section, we can select the card values that we're looking for. So if I said that we look at Jack, then we see in the lower left that there's four ways in total of drawing a trip Jack flop. And given that for every card value, there's four ways of drawing trips, and 13 cards are available in the deck, then it indeed makes sense that there's 4 times 13 equals 52 ways of drawing a trip flop. If we press Tab, then we'll switch to Percentage Output. And we can see that 0.24% of all flops are trips. And this is indeed correct given that 52 divided by 22,100 is 0.24%. I'll switch back to combo mode by pressing tap again. Let me reset everything. And let's now take a look at another type of flop, namely paired flops, where the top card is paired. I will again disable all other flop types by clicking their main check icon. Apparently this applies to 1872 flops, or 8.5%. And we can see here that there's both 936 paired flops that are rainbow, and 936 that are two flush. Let's take a look at an example of a top paired flop, by using the flop values field. And we'll select that the top card must be an ace, and that the bottom card must be a king. And let's only look at rainbow flops. And if we look at the sample section, apparently there's 12 ways of drawing an ace-ace-king rainbow flop. So how many top paired rainbow flops exist in total? Well, if the top card is an ace, then there will be 12 ways of drawing the bottom card. If the top card is a king, then there will be 11 ways of drawing the bottom card. If the top card is a queen, then there will be 10 ways of drawing the bottom card. And if we add up all these values for the different top cards, then we end up with 78 combinations of a top and bottom card. And we can multiply these 78 combinations with the 12 ways of drawing these top and bottom cards resulting in 936 ways of drawing a paired rainbow board where the top card is paired. And this is indeed the value that was originally given for this section. In this middle section you can select a straight structure. Given that there's only two cards for a paired flop, you can simply tell GTO Plus how many gaps you want to use between the top and bottom card. For example, if we set that the top card will be a queen, and that we're looking for two gaps, then the random sample will show us that all the filtered flops are queen, queen, nine, because we are leaving a gap for the jack and ten. Now the section paired flop with bottom card paired is essentially identical to the one where the top card is paired. I will just select it. And all flops in the random sample have a single top card and paired bottom card. I won't bother describing this section in further detail, given that it's basically identical to the first one. Finally, there's the first section, which deals with unpaired flops. There's three types of unpaired flops, rainbow, two flush, and monotone. And if we press tab for the distribution of these flops, 
then we see that there's 31% chance of a rainbow flop, 47% chance of a two flush flop, and 5% chance of a monotone flop. And the total chance of drawing an unpaired flop is 83%. In the third section you can again select a desired range for the top, middle and bottom cards. So for example, there's 64 ways of drawing an ace-king-queen flop. And there's 512 ways of drawing a flop where the top card is either an ace or king, the middle card is either a queen or jack, and the bottom card is either a 10 or 9. In the middle section we can again set a straight structure. For example, let's say that the top card is an ace. Apparently, there's a 19% chance of drawing an unpaired ace-high flop. In the middle section, we can set the gap between the top and middle card, and the gap between the middle and bottom card. For example, this field will set that there's two gaps between top and middle card, and zero gaps between middle and bottom card. I can mouse over the field to get a preview of which hands are currently in it. And with the top card being an ace, this will make the second card a jack, which is indeed two caps away from the ace, and the third card will be a 10, which is directly below the jack. So, that should describe the entire flop breakdown tool. To see how that cards affect the chance of hitting certain flops, then you can enter those here. For example, there's a 19% chance of a flop being unpaired and ace high. But if you hold ace-ace yourself, then the chance of flopping a set on an ace-high board will be 10.8%. Finally, if you create a selection of flops in this menu, and I will just reset the entire menu, and filter for flops that are unpaired and rainbow, and now click on Apply Current Flop Subset, then the preflop stats will now be calculated with only the given subset, and a message will be shown, Flop Subset Used. So given that we're only looking at unpaired rainbow flops, flushes won't be possible, full houses won't be possible, and four of a kind, straight flush or royal flush will also not be possible. To remove working with the subset, click on this field here. So, that's it for this video on the Flop Breakdown tool. In this video I have done my best to cover all of the available fields, and give some examples of how some of the combos are calculated. There's however a near infinite number of possible combinations to filter for here, so unfortunately I just had to limit myself to a few examples. Should there be anything that you want to look at, then you can use the Flop Breakdown tool to filter for anything that you like. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video.